Hey folks, in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a full stack web application using nothing but Java. We're going to build a Spring Boot backend with a VOD and Flow front end, connect that to a database using Spring Data. So let's get to it. Okay, so here I am in a VOD and Flow project. And if you want to follow along, there's a download link in the show notes below where you can download this exact project. And we are in a Maven project here. We're using Java 17 and VOD 24. And to get started, we're going to add a couple of dependencies here that we need. So the first one I'll add is a H2 database dependency. So we have an in-memory database, and then I'll add a Spring uh, Boot JPA, uh, starter JPA, this dependency, so that we have a way of persisting things through Spring data. All right, so then if we look at the actual application that we have here, we have a just a basic Spring Boot application that launches the application, and we have some views here generated by the starter. I'm going to delete these, and we're going to just set up our own view here. So we're going to go and create a new Java class here, and we'll call this to do view. And to do view will extend from a vertical layout like this. And we're going to add a annotation here saying route is equal to an empty string. So that maps this uh, view to the empty route. And then we'll create a constructor. And we can just put in a component here to make sure everything works. So we'll call add, create a new h1 tag saying, hello, world. All right, so then next thing we want to do is run the application, we can do that, like any other Spring Boot application, just run the application class like this. You can also use Maven to run the project if you prefer to do it that way. And what should happen here is that Vaughn starts the build, and in just a couple moments, we should have the browser displaying the application here. And sure enough, we have Hello World. All right, so let's start building the application. I'm going to build the classic to-do application here. So for that, we're going to need a model. I'm going to create a to-do entity for us. Now I'm going to use JPA here, but you can use any other persistent solution. As long as you can get job objects persisted and uh, pulled out of your data source, you're good to go. So I'm going to annotate this with a entity annotation. And then we need to define some properties here. So I'll do a private long ID, a private string for the task, and a private Boolean for the done state. All right, and then I'll create one constructor that takes in the task just as a convenience. And then we need a constructor that doesn't take in anything, just an empty constructor for JPA, and then we'll create getters and setters for everything else like this. Then to make JPA happy, we need to let it know that this will be our ID, and that we're going to use that as a generated value. So let JPA generate the value here for us. All right, so with the entity created, the next thing we're going to do is create an interface called to do repo. And to do repo will extend from JPA repo with a type of to do and a primary key type of long like this. And that essentially takes care of everything that we need in terms of the back end of the application. Now in a real world application, you will probably have a service layer in between with DTOs and all kinds of stuff. But in the interest of simplicity, I'm just going to call the repository straight from my view. So to do that, I'm going to auto wire in this repo. And I'm going to save it to a field. So we have access to it. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do here is create all the components that we need for our UI. So we need a text field to enter the task, we need a button to actually add that task. And then we need some kind of layout where we display all the to do's that we have. So var task is equal to a new text field, and we want to get the one flow component. And we'll have a button which will be equal to a new button. And again, we want to get the combine flow one. And we're going to call add as the label on that. And then we'll go down here and we'll call add. Add here means that we're adding things to the vertical layout, which means that they'll be kind of vertically laid out on top of each other. So the first thing we want to have in our layout will be a new h1 saying to do. And then we'll add a new horizontal layout that contains the task and the button. All right, and then we need to restart the application to pick up all the JPA changes that we did. So we'll 
run this. It'll take just a second for it to spin up and relaunch the browser. And there we go. So what we can see now, if we put these next to each other, is that we have this layout where we have the H1 on top, and then we have the horizontal layout laying out these two components next to each other. And the final component I want to add is a layout to hold all the to-dos that we already have. So a var to-dos will be equal to a new vertical layout. And we can then add this layout here at the bottom. All right, so then let's start building out the logic here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take the button and add a click listener on it. So whenever we get a click, we want to do something. And what I want to do is essentially call the repository to save a new to do with the value from our task field like this, say our to do here. So we have that. And then what we want to do is we want to add that to our layout. So I'm going to call to do's dot add, and then we'll create a helper method for creating checkboxes for each of these. So I'll call create check box and pass in that to do like this. I'll then use the ID to create this method. And this will return a component and take in a to do. And what we'll return here is a new checkbox. And if we take a look at what it takes in, we can essentially give it a label, an initial value and a value change listener. So that's what we want to do. So we'll start with the label, that'll be the to do's task. Then we'll have the initial value, which will be the done state. And then we'll add a listener for what to do whenever the value changes. All right, so when a value of a to do changes, whenever we update it to either be checked or not checked, we want to update that in our in our database. So we're going to say to do dot set done is equal to the event value. And then we need to save that. So we're going to call repo dot save with the to do like that. Okay, so let's build the application here and make sure that we're on the right track. All right, so we have the application here. Let's test something and click add. And sure enough, it shows up here. Now, that's already a pretty good start. But there's a problem here that if we refresh this right now, we don't get any of those to do's that we created earlier visible here. So what we want to do then is go into our main constructor here, and we're going to initialize this view with everything that we have in the database from before. So we're going to call repo, we're going to call find all, and then we're going to go through each one of those, each to do, and we're going to say to do's dot add, and then call this create checkbox helper that we did with that to do like that. All right. All right. So let's see where we are, let's say test, click add, and refresh. And sure enough, we can see it. If we select the test here, and we refresh, we can see that the value is still persisted. Now, that's basically already a working application, but let's do a couple more tweaks to it just to make it look a little bit nicer. So one thing that's bothering me here is the alignment here, I want to remove the extra padding that we have on this one layout. So for that, we can go in here. And we can say to do's dot set padding to false. I also want to make this button stand out a little bit more. So I can go here and say button dot add theme variants and add the primary theme variant to that. And finally, I want to make it a little power user friendly. So I want to map the enter key to this button. And so for that, I can call button dot add click shortcut and pass in the enter key. So what we should have now is a functional to do application where we can add items with enter. And they're all nicely aligned here, we can persist them, and we can refresh, and everything just works. Let's do one last little tweak here. So when we add new things and hit enter, it would be nice if it cleared the field for us so we can add a new one again, we can go into the click listener here and call task dot clear to clear out the previous task from there. So let's give this last change a try. We'll wait for it to reload, and then we'll try it out. So say one, two, three, like that. And there we have it. So let's check a couple of these. And sure enough, it works. All right, so there you have it a simple full stack application built with Spring Boot and Vaughn Flow. If you have any questions, ask them in the 
comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.